Which one looks tasty? Okay, leaf yeah. liquor. Leaf <laughs> <laughs> liquor. Adventures travelers and friends and welcome back to a Bagworthy Adventures video. I'm your host Rose and today is our second tour with Rising Tide Explorers. So if you haven't already seen I made a video where we went on a shelling tour with them. It was so much fun. Feel free to check it out. I've got it linked up above but today we are going to go out and we're going to go kayaking with them. Now Rising Tide Explorers uses science professionals and biologists to lead their tours so I'm so excited to see what we learned today and excited to get back out on the water with them. Michael should be hopping in the car soon and we should be heading over. I hope you enjoy! This takes off near the Isle of Capri area. Um, I think they have another takeoff point, but the one that is detailed on our email is the Isle of Capri area. So that's where we're heading right now and we're excited to go, but we're also nervous because the mosquitoes yesterday were vicious. So we're both wearing, you know, long sleeves and everything. They do say on their email to bring bug spray, bring sunscreen. I would bring I would an exterminator. Follow. Yeah. Because it's, it's crazy. It's a little intense lately, but it's also kind of rainy season. So. Florida in June. So many bugs. Yes. So be aware and be prepared. Now, when we got to the paddlecraft area, it was very easy to find Rising Tide. They were well marked, their trucks had the logo on them, their shirts had the logo on them, so we could find our kayak buddies. And they began the tour telling us a little bit about their specific scientific perspectives. I went to Auburn University for my undergrad degree. Uh, I got my degree in zoology, so the study of animals. Um, moved down here in 2013 uh, to go to graduate school at Florida Gulf Coast University, just up the road. I got my master's in environmental science. Um, I actually did my research in the Rookery Bay Reserve, so the place that we're going to today, uh, but I was not in the water, I was on the upland areas. So if you're familiar with the area, Shell Island Road, um, across from Feathers Creek, that's where I did my research, uh, and I worked with everyone's favorite animals, snakes. It was nice to be able to get to know our guides and he was able to also give us an introduction of how to use the kayaks for those who hadn't used them in a while and then we started getting bodies in the water. Now when you start, you're in that large basin of water, but soon you find yourself getting into the tunnels of the mangroves where you can get a little more access to some wonderful nature opportunities to learn about. Do y'all know what these are? Oysters. Oysters, oh. yeah. So this is the same species of oyster that you get at the restaurants. Um, my boat floats away. It's a long swim back in. Um, yeah, these are the same species that you get at the restaurants. They're just way smaller down here. So an adult size oyster here is only going to be about two or three inches tall. Um, they are kind of sharp, so if you do pick them up, just be careful. Um, they, uh, they're called a keystone species. Um, so you might have heard of keystone before. You've seen like that weird kind of triangle piece at the very top of the brick archway, right? Uh, that's called the keystone. Um, and it basically holds all those bricks together. If you were to remove that keystone, all those bricks would collapse, right? So the same concept with the keystone species. If you were to remove these from the ecosystem, then this entire place would look completely different. The entire ecosystem would basically collapse. Um, as babies, the oysters are actually mobile, so they're actually like, they look like little tiny fish. Um, they swim around, they latch onto hard things, so that's why you find them in clumps like this, right? They latch onto shells of other organisms, they latch onto roots, they latch onto your boat if you leave your boat out for too long. Um, and then once they latch on, they start to grow their actual shell and become the oyster that we know of, like as an adult, where they don't move at all. Speaking of moving and not moving, because there were opportunities to stop and learn about something nearby, but there were also cool tunnels to go through, I feel like the tour had a nice balance of working and resting so you didn't 
spend all your energy, but you also weren't sitting around. Now these mangrove systems are obviously pretty vast and I was very thankful that we had a guide because I most certainly would have gotten lost. Our guide on this tour also was able to tell us about the mangroves and so Michael got his chance to lick a black mango leaf. Which one looks tasty? Okay, leaf yeah. licker. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, we went Salty. in for a second lick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a third. <laughs> Here, I will uh, pass, pass, pass around. Off. That's right. So these pass are the snacks. Tater, tater chips. There you go. Too soon, it seemed, it was time to head back through the basin to the paddlecraft area and back on towards home. Okay, hey guys, we are back home. It was an amazing day out kayaking. You can tell I'm wearing a different shirt now. I actually really liked the shirt that the guides were wearing. I thought the logo was just so cool. I just had to have it, so I bought one myself. Um, you can buy them too. They usually have them in their trucks with them. Um, and it's nice to wear a shirt that not only looks cool, but also represents a company that you think is doing awesome things. I love how Rising Tide is using actual science professionals to lead their tours so that people can learn from those who have the ethos and credibility to teach. And I honestly learned so much, not just in this kayak tour, but also in the shelling tour we saw. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it up here and it's in the description. If you're now there was one more tour we were hoping to be able to take, which takes you further into the mangroves, and it is the High Points Ancient Island Tour. It takes you to this ancient burial ground from previous eras where you can learn more about the ecosystem, and it's in one of the highest points, obviously. That's where the name came from. But we didn't get a chance to go because it's very reliant on tides, and so we just weren't able to find a time where the tides worked with our schedule. If you're interested in learning more about Rising Tide, I'll go ahead and put their website down below. But I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you like videos like this about travel, about tours, about things to do, places to go, go ahead and subscribe. Anyways, but as always, thanks so much for watching. Bye, travelers!